Our second reading from today comes from 2 Timothy, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. It can be found on page 199 in the New Testament of your pew Bibles. Let us listen for God's word. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, for the sake of the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my beloved child, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I am grateful to God whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did when I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. Do not be ashamed then of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner, but join with me in suffering for the gospel, relying on the power of God who saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our own works, but according to his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, but it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior Christ Jesus, who abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. For this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and a teacher. And for this reason I suffer as I do, but I am not ashamed, for I know the one in whom I have put my trust, and I am sure that he is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you with the help of the Holy Spirit living in us. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord stands forever. Amen. Well, when I was a kid, my world revolved around school, playing with neighborhood friends, and spending time with my grandparents. They only lived about five minutes away growing up in Tampa, Florida. And out of all the parts of my eight or nine-year-old world, I treasure that time with my grandparents the most. What I've come to value most about their presence in my life are the unremarkable and ordinary things, but they mean the world to me. My grandfather, Charles Saturnia, or Pop Pop, as we called him, well, it's from him where any and all of my Italian ancestry comes, which is a lot less than we thought, actually. <laughs> my brother did a DNA test. But he used to go around the house humming Italian melodies and proclaiming in Italian, pasta fagiol, which only as an adult did I figure out was a kind of soup. <laughs> My grandfather would always make us kids laugh, and now, as an adult, when I am puttering around the house, I find myself humming melodies, and I have my pop-pop to thank for my naturally curly hair. My grandmother, Elizabeth Doss Eternia, came from a Protestant English ancestry, and it caused quite a stir in their families in Dover, New Jersey, when this Italian Catholic boy and this English Protestant girl began dating, so much so that they eloped. My grandmother was the best cook I knew, and when I make spaghetti and meatballs and lasagna and chicken and rice and pasties, which is like a Cornish meat pie, I feel close to my grandmother. My grandmother always kept her bread in the refrigerator and her money in the freezer. True story. <laughs> Both my grandparents loved to play cards, and they were involved in activities with friends and families. And after family meals, we always sat down and played penny poker. You know, often I would go to Catholic Mass with my grandparents, and from time to time I loved it, uh, even though I often was confused and had no clue what was going on because it was so much different from the church services I was used to. And my grandparents were very involved in their church, and they always, always were. It was part of their lives. And when I went with them to Mass or one of the activities at church, their friends at church would make such a big deal of me being there. They'd say, oh, is this Pammy? My grandparents called me Pammy. You can call me Pastor Pammy if you want. <laughs> I was kidding about that. 
And then we'd go out for breakfast after church, uh, which they did on a weekly basis, always to the same place. They always had the same waitress. I eat my eggs over easy to this day because my grandmother ate them that way. That way. I loved spending time with my grandparents. They spoiled us. But more importantly, I always felt special when I was with my grandparents, and I knew I was the apple of their eyes. Now, my life would not be the same if Charlie and Beth had not been my grandparents. I carry what they handed down with me, their love of family and life, of having a good time together, and of course, their faith. I carry those things with me, and I carry many other things that I don't even know about, that I'm not even aware of. One of the things that was handed down to Timothy by his grandmother was his faith, his sincere faith. And Paul is encouraging Timothy to carry on the tradition of faith that has been given to him. He says, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, the faith that first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice and now lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you. Paul is reminding Timothy of his heritage, his good heritage of faith that was passed down from generation to generation. One of the things that we can take from this passage is the importance of families developing faith. Lewis Donaldson writes that the faith environment that the family creates is one where families much, must teach and practice Christian life we learn from our parents, right? And we in turn pass it on to our children. We cannot underestimate the importance family has on our life of faith. Tradition matters. It matters. It not only matters, it's vital to one's faith. And it is our responsibility here to see that tradition live on. William Loder, though, gives a good description of what carrying on the tradition might mean when he writes, being a bearer of tradition according to 2 Timothy does not mean closing up the shop, buying the treasure to use imagery of another famous parable. Rather, it means ensuring the connections are upheld and consistency maintained while letting the fire burn and good news shine in our contemporary context. See, the tradition that's handed down to us is not a museum piece to be put away in a display box. Traditions are not static. They only stay alive if they have meaning for the next generation. And that is our job, to hand down those traditions to the next generation. Now, you may have heard the story of the young woman who, who helped her mother prepare the roast for Sunday dinner. She said, why do you cut the ends off of the roast before you place it into the pan, Mom? Her mother responded, I don't know. I'm simply doing it the same way my mother did. Why don't you give your grandmother a call and find out why? You're going to love this. Grandma, the young woman said, when you cook your roast, why do you cut off the ends? Oh, that's simple, her grandmother replied. My pan was too small. I cut off the ends to make it fit. Tradition can become something we do without thinking of why it is important to us. And 2 Timothy reminds us that we need to know why it is important to us, that we must rekindle those traditions in ways that make sense for our time. Remember, Timothy was encouraged to rekindle the gift of God that is within him, and he's encouraged then to guard the good treasure the gift, the gift that he's given is faith. And that faith first lived in his grandmother and then his mother and now in him. And it would seem that maybe perhaps Timothy has hit one of those low points in his life of faith. Maybe he's not attending worship as regularly as he used to or, or maybe his prayer life is sporadic or non-existent. Maybe he is struggling with God's purpose for his life. We don't know, but whatever it is, Paul is encouraging Timothy to fan the flames, fan the embers into flames, that the embers are still there, to fan them into flames. Paul is challenging Timothy to make the tradition that was handed down to him come alive again. And that is our challenge too, to take what has been handed down to us and make the connections that make it come alive. You know, I don't know what your grandparents handed down to you, 
You may have learned how to cook lasagna, or you may have learned how to bowl, or you may have your grandparents' hands or your grandfather's hair. You may have kept alive the tradition of family gatherings or special traditions at the holidays. You may have learned what it meant to be loved and to love from your grandparents and your parents. You may have been handed down the gift of faith that lived in them and now lives in you. So we give thanks today for all the gifts that have been handed down to us by our parents and grandparents and our parents and grandparents of the faith. We give thanks for the gift of faith that lived in our spiritual grandparents and our spiritual parents and now lives in us. May we all do what we need to do with that tradition to rekindle the gift of God that is within us and guard that good treasure. Amen.